Hello, hello my loves and welcome to my channel, Maddie's Creating Ideas. I'm Maddie's and here we are again in my workshop. Today is the fifth class of this beautiful project of patterns and sewing and tailoring because you know that I love to call it a project because every day more and more people are joining and I love this. If you're new, it does not matter. It's no biggie. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to leave a little link up here and that's where we have all of the classes that we've done so you can catch up and, you know, be up to date. And that's it. It's time to learn. Last class, I talked to you about how to take measurements and today we're going to make the patterns. So we're going to start working with the women's pattern for the upper body, front, as well as the back. Hey, it's very simple, but we have a long way to go for men's, babies, and children. But don't worry, we're headed there very soon. The thing is, do you remember last class where we talked about measurements that were long, measurements that were wide, and then the ones that were around the body or the circumference that go round like this? So the measurements that are lengthwise, we're not going to divide by anything. Those are going to stay the same. For example, the client wants a length of a skirt that's 50 centimeters long vertically. So 50, I'm not going to divide by anything. I'm going to leave it exactly that length because she wants it to be 50 centimeters long. But the measurements that are taken horizontally from one point to the other, we're going to divide them by two because we're going to work with patterns for the front and the back and they're each going to be like a half a pattern. If we work on the front part, for example, the separation of the bust, we're going to divide by two and then we're going to write it down. But don't worry, when we make the pattern right now, you'll understand a little bit better. The measurements that go around the body that are the circumference, for example, the circumference of the bust, of the hips, of the waist, we're going to divide those by four. This is because two parts go to the front and two parts go to the back and two and two is four. So without any further ado, let's start. Well, my loves, these are the forms or the worksheets that I gave you, and this is for you to take measurements of your client. So this is kind of how it goes in this case. This is the men's one, so if you see here, it has a spot for you to fill in the name and the last name, their phone number, the date that you're taking these measurements, and the date for them to try on the piece and possibly make changes. And then the last date is the date to give them their garment fully completed. Here it says design to be made, and it's a blank spot where you can put the model or the design that you want to do. Right here to the left is where you put the measurements of the upper body down to the lower body, and over here it tells you where to put what you're dividing for the measurements. Down here it says other measurements, just in case you guys want to take, I don't know, the head measurement or the nose measurement, I don't know. Whatever you want to do, just put whatever measurement you want to add down there. Here's the spot for the fabric sample because when you have a lot of clients, sometimes this thing happens where they bring pieces of fabric and then you don't know whose is what. So you just take a little piece of the fabric and you put it here just to, you know, make this design up. Down here where it says observations, you're going to place little details about what the client wants just in case maybe they'll say that one arm is longer than the other or that half the garment that they want they want in blue and the other half they want in pink i don't know here you just write whatever it is that you observe whatever detail the client gives you you remember that the more you have the better here we have the man's you know worksheet just in case you guys want to do something for a girl or a boy or a baby but today we're going to be working with the women's one here I went ahead and I put up a little body right here so you can draw the design that you want to make for your client. Since today we're only going to start making the pattern for the upper body, then here I just draw the upper piece in red. So my client's name is Lola. I don't know why, but my son said that her name is Lola. And since we're only going to be working with her upper body and we're not going to do anything for the lower part yet, and since we're not going to do sleeves either, then I'm not going to take all of those measurements. I just need the neck measurements, the back width, the front waist length, and the back waist length, the bust height, the separation of the bust, which is divided by two, but I didn't take the neckline or the circumference of the thorax because we don't need those measurements here. Then I took the circumference of the bust, which is divided by four. The circumference of the waist, which is divided by four, but I didn't take the measurements for the hips because I'm not gonna work with that. So these are the measurements that I need. 
So her measurements are, for the circumference of her neck, 36. And I'm going to divide that by 6, which is 6. Then the width of her back, which is horizontally 34. And then we're going to divide that by 2. So it's 17. And then for the front waist length and the back waist length, these are measurements that are vertically measured, so they're not divided by anything. These are always left the same. The separation of the bust is divided by 2, so here we have 18 and half of that is 9. For the bust we have a circumference of 82 and I'm going to divide that by 4, and that's 20.5. Now we have the measurement of her waist and that is 62 and we're going to divide that by 4, which ends up being 15.5. So watch out with this thing. Her back waist length is 40 and the front is 44. The difference between these two from 40 to 44 is 4 centimeters. The difference that we're going to write right here. So yeah, this is where all my measurements are and I hope that it helps you practice before you take measurements for your clients. Now we're going to make the pattern. So take your little worksheet here and let's go make patterns. When I'm ready to make a pattern, I have all of my measurements on hand. Everything that I took from my clients, everything is already divided, so I have it right here, ready for me. So I mentioned that we were going to need paper like this. This is craft paper, something like this you're going to need. We're going to need a ruler, a long one, curved rollers, these are optional, but they help keep a lot of things like the curves of the neck and all of those things, but you don't have to have this kind of ruler, then it's not a big deal if you don't have one. You can actually use your hand as a compass with this part right here to make curves. It's very easy to make them. If anything, you could also use your elbow to have like a wider curve. And everything is, you know, trial and error, trying, practicing. We're going to need a small ruler. If you have one, if not, then the big one is fine. A calculator just in case. Of course, some measuring tape, some scissors. And remember I told you to have scissors just to cut paper and not to use the same one that you cut fabric with because it's just going to mess up the sharpness so make sure that you have one that's just for paper and one that's just for fabric. So make sure you have one that's just for paper and one that's just for fabric. I personally make my patterns using a pencil and I highly recommend this as well because if you make one mistake or anything, you can just easily erase it, reset it. And if we do that with a pen, for example, then I would just end up with a bunch of scribbles. We also have some colored markers because we can take some notes to not confuse ourselves with the same colors and the names of the clients and things like that, especially if we're just starting to make patterns. We're going to need some tape to hold together any like darts or pins or any transformations that you might want to make on your pattern. A right angle device is also very useful. This right here is along those lines, but if you don't have one, don't worry. You could just take a piece of cardboard or something that's nice and square. And it's basically just to make sure that the paper that we're making a pattern with is perfectly squared and it's perfect 90 degree angle. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a bit. Although most people like to start off the patterns from the front, I'm going to start with the back so that when you do the front, you're going to understand it better and it'll be so much easier. Here's one thing. You know that measuring tape comes with that little metal end at the end? I always take those off and I work with my measuring tape just like that without the little piece of metal because that little piece of metal is a little thick and when I have that piece of metal there, I'm going to mark a measurement like a little line and it adds a few millimeters and a few millimeters, believe it or not, can mess up the measurement that took so long. Uh, just because it's adding, for example, two millimeters to each part. So if it's done four times, then that means that it's almost one centimeter extra. So I don't use that little metal piece. I take it off and if like a millimeter is missing, then I could just go ahead and mark that afterwards. Those are just little tricks. So the first thing, if you don't have a 90 degree angle ruler, just take a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper and just put it up to the corner and make sure that it's nice and squared. This line goes well with this line and that's important for this to be perfect. It can't be crooked in any way because then the pattern is going to be crooked and it's just not going to look good. So once it's perfectly square, then we're going to start making the patterns. So we're only going to be working with half of the back. So it's half of the client's back, pretty much. I'm going to have my client standing like this, so I'm going to draw my pattern halfway like this. Does that make sense? So 
So half her body is what I'm going to draw here as if they were standing like this. And the vertical measurements, I'm going to go from the top to the bottom. And the parts that are horizontal or quarter parts are going from here in. So now let's begin to draw. My client has the back waist length measurement of 40 centimeters. So now I'm going to measure the top part down 40 centimeters and from the top to the bottom 40. And then I mark it right here. I measure it twice, one line here and one line here, so that again it's nice and square and not crooked. We want everything to look nice and squared always. Okay, so now we saw that from the top to the bottom it's 40. And now I'm going to take the horizontal measurements from the center in, and I'm going to measure one quarter of the bust measurement. And she has 82 centimeters for her bust. Divided by 4, I get 20.5. So I measure 20.5 here, and I mark it at the bottom. And then on the top, and then I make a line right here, so I'm going to work in this part right here. And I'm doing everything in marker like this so that you're able to see it. Because if I do it in pencil, then the lines won't show very well at all. The next measurement that we're going to do is the one that's right at the length of the axilla. So we can start making the area where the arms are going to go through. Okay, so we're going to make this measurement like this. And this is the width of my client's back. It's 34 centimeters. So we're going to measure from the top to the bottom half of the width of the back plus 4 centimeters. Always, 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 no matter the width of the back that you have, it's always going to be half of that plus 4 centimeters. So here we have 34, half of that is 17, plus 4 is 21. And I'm going to put a little dot here at the 21, and then a little dot here at the 21, and then I'm going to connect them. And I'm going to put the lines here, and that's where the axilla is supposed to end up. Next, we're going to do half the width of the back. We're going to measure the center like a horizontal line, which is 17 centimeters. And we're going to measure here 17 and here 17. And there goes another little line, like so. But since we aren't square like that, we need a little curve or a little hole for our necks and for our shoulders and all of that since we aren't square like Frankenstein's monster. You are going to look for your neck circumference measurements and you're going to divide those by 6 like it says here. She has 36 and if we divide that by 6 then I get 6 centimeters. So it'll be 6 centimeters plus 1, always, always, always going to be 1 sixth of the neck plus 1. We're going to place it from this point to the 7 centimeters and we're going to put a little dot right there. And from here, we're going to measure 2 centimeters down, always, always, always 2 centimeters. Now you're going to get your little ruler and you're going to line it up so that it goes from one point to the other, like so. So this would be the little curve for the neck. And now we need a little fall right here for the shoulders from this line down. And we're always, always, always going to measure four centimeters. And then you're gonna make a little mark right there. And now you're gonna make a line from this dot which is the base of the neck, to this dot. Ta-da! Now we have a little curve of the neck and a fall of the shoulder. Here we have to make a little curve for the armhole, which is where the arm is going to go. And now we're going to take this ruler right here at about one centimeter, and I'm going to do this in red marker so that you guys can see better and understand what I'm going to do. It's going to be a line like this. Ta -da! So the neck is done, and the shoulder is done, and now the armhole is done too. Do you see? Now it's starting to look like a back. It's starting to get a form. But since my client has a waist, now we're going to mark from the line that's the waistline, 
I'm going to measure in a quarter of the waist measurement plus three centimeters that are later going to be pinned or made a dart to give more of a shape to the body. If she has 15.5, which is a quarter of her measurement, then we're going to add three, which is 18.5. Now with this ruler that's a little bit longer and the curve isn't as prominent, we're gonna do a little curve just like this and we're gonna join these two like so. Now we're gonna do the pin part that I mentioned before. Take your measuring tape and you're gonna put it down here by the base of the waist. Now I'm gonna fold it in half and the halfway point I'm gonna put a little dot like this. In this little dot, I'm gonna measure three centimeters that I added to the waist. So I'm going to place those right in the middle. So one and a half to the right and one and a half to the left. And now I'm gonna have three little dots right here. This ruler has a right angle here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's nice and square right here on the inside. And on the outside it's a little curved, but the inside it's straight. So in the dot in the middle, I'm going to put the ruler, I'm going to line it up, and I'm going to draw a line right in the middle. But without reaching the top. Right here, do you see? Uh, and this is the line for the armhole, so I'm going to count 5 centimeters, and I'm going to make a dot right here. And from there, as well, I'm going to draw a line. So in other words, I draw a line perpendicular to the halfway point going up because that's the line I can't touch, the line that I've already marked, which is the armhole. It's going to have five centimeters of a difference here. And then from this point, we're gonna do a little chicken leg kind of thing. So we're gonna do like this. It's going to be the darts part of the back. This is the neck. This is the fall of the shoulder, and here is where the armhole is going to go. And this is going to be the sideline. We don't have the bust on our back, so we're straight. But in the front part, we do have a bust, and the front part is going to be a little bit longer. For that to be the same as the back measurement, we're going to create a dart. And I'm going to show you how, so you can understand better. This is where I'm going to draw the front part. So this is where we're going to outline whatever it is that we need for the front. In this case, the front of my client is 44 centimeters long. So I measure 44 centimeters in length and then 44 centimeters in length and then I connect the line. The same way I did in the back part, I'm going to measure from here to there one quarter of the measurement of the bust. And I said that one quarter of the measurement of the bust was 20.5. So I put a little dot here where it says 20.5 and I measure here 20.5. Now this is the space that I'm going to use to make the front pattern again since we're not school wear. We need to make the form again. So where is that harm hole? We're going to measure half of the back from top to bottom plus four centimeters. It's always going to be four. Now, we mark the width of the back from this line to there, half the width. Remember, it's half the measurement of the back. Now I'm gonna go back to the neck here to make the little curve for the neck. Again, we're gonna do one sixth of the neck measurement plus one from here to here. So one sixth of the measurement is six plus one is seven, and I put a little dot here at seven. I'm going down in the front part, you know, make sure it's 16 down plus two. It's always going to be one sixth of the measurement plus two in the front. So one sixth of the measurement is six plus two, then it would be eight, and I'm gonna mark eight here and seven here. I'm gonna get the little ruler that I've been using again, and I'm gonna do this line. And I'm gonna do it in red so that you guys can see that this is going to be the curve of the neck for the front. But 
but since we're not square, here I need a fall of the shoulder. So I'm going to measure again 4 centimeters. Always, always, always 4 centimeters for the shoulders. I'm going to go in again with the red from the base of the neck to the fall of the shoulder that I've just marked. And here we go. Do you see here it's starting to have a little bit of shape and now we're going to go in again with the armhole and I'm going to put the little ruler here and we're going to form this little curve like so. And now this is the armhole for the front. Here we're going to make a dart that's going to help us make the little area where the bust is going to go. And it's also going to help us match up the front to the back. Let me explain. From the base of the neck, we're going to go down and measure the height of the bust. And the height of the bust for our client is 26. And then we're going to, you know, do a little dot right here. At the same height, we're going to use our measuring tape nice and straight and parallel to this line. Like, we're not going to do it like this slanted or anything crazy. It's just going to be parallel, nice and straight. And there, we're going to measure half of the separation of the bust. And my client has 18, which means half is 9. And that means that there is where we have the height of the bust. So her nipple is there, and that is that little dot that I'm going to draw here. From this point uh, to the height of the armhole, I'm going to just connect the lines like this. Do you see? And from this point down, I'm going to measure the difference of measurements of the front waist length and the back waist length. And they're written here on our little worksheet. Do you see here it says back waist length and then front waist length? And then here there's a little squiggly line and another line to add another measurement which I explained is the difference and um, if I didn't explain then let me explain it again it's the difference of the measurements between the front and the back so the measurements here are 40 and 44 and the difference is 4 so 4 centimeters we're gonna do from this point down so we're gonna measure like this 4 centimeters down I'm gonna do a little dot right here and look at what we're gonna do you're going to take the measuring tape at the height of the nipple like this until you got to this point of the armhole. Then you're going to put your finger like this and you're going to just turn the measuring tape slightly as if it was a compass. And you're going to lower it to reach that little dot right there and you're just going to connect the dots with a line. If it's a little bit bigger than the point where you are now, if it's a little bit longer, it's okay. Nothing is wrong with it, it's just because I need to close this later and I can't have one be shorter than the other. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do it again. I'm going to press here and I turn it like this and the measuring tape should be straight and then I just draw a line like this. We have to make sure that they're the same length. So this one measures 13 centimeters and now I have to make sure that this one also measures 13 centimeters. Now I can properly draw the waist here and the darts. This is my line of waist and there I'm going to mark a quarter of the waist measurements plus 3 centimeters for the pins or the darts. I said that a quarter of the measurements were 15.5 plus the 3 equals 18.5 and we're just going to draw a dot right there. Now we're going to connect this dot to the bottom dot with this less curved ruler like this. Now the 3 centimeters that we added here as an extra to the waist, we're not going to you know, do how we did in the back part where it was just the halfway point and that's it. We are going to guide ourselves to be able to draw it from the same separation of bust that we have here. Halfway is 9, so we're going to measure 9 down here as well like this. And we're going to measure a centimeter and a half from this point to the right and from this point to the left because this is where we're going to center the darts. And we're going to do the three dots in the same way and this is what we're going to do. From the height of the bust to this point down, it has to be nice and straight, right? So we're going to measure four centimeters from this point down. And starting from those four centimeters where we're going to draw the dart now, we're going to open it again like a little chicken's foot. So now we have the dart 
that aligns with the bust height. Why did I leave the four centimeter space here? Why didn't I take it all the way up? Because if I take this all the way up, then I'm also eating up a lot of the measurement of the bust and that's not ideal. The idea is to make a little cavity, you know, a little baggie where the bust is going to go. This dart that we have right here, we can just move it down or move it up a little bit later. Now we're going to cut around the red lines in the front and the back patterns. When we get to this point, we're going to leave like this little curve like this and like this. This little dart right under the armhole, we're going to move down just a little bit so it's not so exactly under the axilla. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to measure the armhole line down. We're going to measure six centimeters. It's kind of like a guide measurement. And those six centimeters, we're going to draw another line up until the dot of the nipple like this. And this line that we just did, we're going to cut it like this up until here. And now that I've cut it, these two, we have an opening like this. We're going to fold it from the bottom like this, and I'm going to fold until this dot, okay? Now I'm going to fold the pleat upwards, and I'm not going to go down. I'm going to go up like you see here. Both of these are the same, and this line is the same as the upper line when I fold it like this. Now with some scissors, you're going to cut out this little piece, and now this is what you want it to look like. All we did here was move the dart just a little bit lower, and now we're going to take some tape and we're going to close it up and we're going to forget about this dart. This one down here, we're going to cut all the way up to the middle, up until we marked the dot, and then we're going to fold them inwards like this. Now we have two darts, the one up here and the one for the waist. When we cut it out in fabric and we sew the darts shut, you'll see what happens. This is where the client's bust is going to go. Do you see it's more concave now with these two darts and it looks amazing. Now let's go into the back part. So now that I have the back part and the front part, if I put both of these together, they line up perfectly when we do the darts. They also line up perfectly the two shoulder areas. And this is where the neck area would be if I put both of them together. And then it comes out perfectly and the shoulders, everything. If you notice here, the height of the bust, since I put the dart a little bit lower with the front ones, it creates a cavity right where her bust is. If you notice here, there are no wrinkles being created in the armhole or the shoulders. And look at how nice the neck comes out. Perfectly. And we even work the waist, and this is where we're going to leave off the pattern for the front.
in the back part, it's the same. The armhole is perfect, the neck is perfect, and even the waist is perfect. She's going to have good mobility of her arms, especially when she moves her arms towards the front of her body and things like that. Well, my loves, today's class goes up to here and you already saw how the pattern looks on the body. I put it together and yeah, you already saw. I've been working for more than 20 years with this kind of thing. And obviously I'm going to teach you when we're gonna sew the little tricks that one does for it to come out better. And a better made garment, if you wanna add another measurement or shape, that's okay too. Everything is valid here. I'm a firm believer that in this world, limits do not exist and it's impossibilities that don't exist that there is not just one single golden rule and it's not just one perfect thing for all bodies in the world because not all bodies are the same and there are no two bodies in the world that are replicas of each other and impossibilities do not exist for me i just said that all processes are valid if in the end the result is fabulous don't leave yet without giving me a little thumbs up and a comment down below about what you thought and if you've used it, make sure to write me on Instagram or Facebook at Maris Creando Ideas and if anything you want to tell me, you know, let me know. I'm going to leave some links down in the description box for the two rulers that I used, the curvy ones, and you can download it and then you can have it made from wood or plastic or anything that's like durable, something resistant, and that way you can work with them as well and make this whole process easier for you. And without talking anymore, many hugs and many kisses for all of you, and we'll see each other in our next class with drawing the pattern for sleeves. Sending you all kisses. Bye! Before you go, make sure to subscribe and click on the little bell so that you don't miss any of my new classes. Bye!